Oh, I'd rather look at the penguin, actually. There we are. A more advanced look at functions. So after the four graphing problems, you have this word problem right here. No fighting. Parents have to be tough on their kids when they fight. OK. A function A of S. Now that's written just like F of X. We have. We're used to seeing F of X or more used to seeing F of X, but A of S is also a signature for a function. A function is coming. We have a function A of S given by A of S equals 0.328 S plus 50. And this is being used to estimate the average age of employees of a company between the years 1981 to 2009. This is a very common kind of problem in college algebra and above. From now on, you're going to see these. Let A of S be the average age, which they already said, and S be the number of years since 1981. That's after 1981. So they give you an example here. If S is zero, that means it's 1981. If S is nine, it's going to be 1981 plus nine, which is 1990. Now those aren't the questions we're going to be answering. The question we're going to be answering is what was the average age of the employees in 2003 and in 2009? So this is going to be our job. We're given certain facts. We're told what A of S is. Remember, A of S is just Y. And we're told that what that equals is the average age of the employees. Well, let's say average age of employees. Oops, M, P, L, O, Y, E, E. Can I fit in the S? Yes, OK, S, the S, which is acting like X. S is the number of years after 1981. The number of years after 1981. So, so S, S is S basically is, the same as X, right? Yes, it is exactly so the same. Does the number or the letter before it matter? Like A of S or F of S or like, does that matter? They could have used F of X if they had wanted to, but here they're talking about age. And so they used A instead of F just to help you remember that this A of S, which is just Y, is the age. So okay. in this, Y is going to be the age. And S is the number of years after 1981. Does that help? Yes, it does. Thank you. OK, first we have to translate these years, 2003 and 2009. For this particular piece of research that the company had done, uh, the world begins in 1981, the, the, the universe of this particular study. The very first year is 1981. So if we want to find out what 2003 is, Right, here's the year, the real year. 
Now, what does that equal in terms of S? We can make our own little, um, little table here, our own little T-chart, where we've got year and we've got S. Since S is years after 1981, we're going to translate 2003 into 2003 minus 1981. And 2009 will be represented by 2009 minus 1981. So that's what S is going to equal. All I have to do is find out. Oops, oops, oops. S. All right, let me see if I can drag this over a little bit. Yes, I can. Okay, let's turn on the calculator. 2003. Minus 1981. Enter. This is going to be year 22. 2003 is year 22. It's 22 years after 1981. And 2009. Well, back up. There. All you have to do is overwrite. It's great, it saves a lot of time. 2009 minus 1981. Enter. And that's 28. So 2009 is going to be year 28. So now the function we're going to use is A of S. equals 0 0.328 S plus 50. But this is exactly the same thing as writing Y equals 0 0.328 X plus 50. Same thing. Exact same thing. So it's just a matter of getting used to a new language. Well, if I want to figure out what 2003 is, I am, if I want to write this as a function, I'll say A of not 2003, but 22. A of 22. This is just a code. That says I'm going to put 22 in for the S. Or if you want to think of it as X, I'm going to put 22 in for the X. 0 0.328 times. Actually, I prefer parentheses because there's already a dot. I don't want to have too many dots. 22 plus 50. All right, so we come over here. 0.328 times 22 plus 50. Because your calculator knows order of operations, it knows that it's going to multiply before it adds. So there's not a danger of 22 being added to 50. You come up with 72 and then multiply it by 0.328. That mistake is not going to be made by the calculator unless there's something really wrong with the calculator. So I hit enter. And the answer I get, now it's going to tell us what we need to round to, but I'm going to write out the answer anyway. 57. 0.216. Now the instructions, look, you have two different kinds of instructions. There's the word problem itself telling you what to look for, 
And then there are these blue words, which are always underneath where you put the answer. Round to the nearest whole number as needed. Even though 57.216 is correct, if I were to write that, if I were to type that in, it would tell me I'm wrong because the instructions specifically tell me to round to the nearest whole number. Okay, so the, the whole number part of a decimal is the part to the left of the decimal point. To know how to round it, I look immediately to the right. I don't care about the 16. I only care about the two. And two will not cause the seven to round up to an eight. So that's how the answer is 57. So what we did with this kind of problem that tells you that the variable represents a certain number of years after a certain time, you're always going to translate the years you're asked for into whatever the variable equals, whether it's X or T or S, you're going to have to translate first, and then go ahead and put those numbers in for the variable and then calculate your answer. Okay, since 2009 is year 28, I'm going to look for A of 28 equals 0 0.328, a point, a giant decimal point, 328 times 28 plus 50, and that will equal, oh, wait a minute, I have this to make it bigger. Brighten up, okay. 0.328 times 28 plus 50. Enter. And that gives me 59.184. Again, I'm going to round to the nearest whole number. This is the whole number part. I look immediately to the right. I don't look at any of this. Just at the number immediately to the right. And a one will not cause the 59 to round up to 60. So we keep it 59. And 59 is indeed the answer to the second question. The biggest danger is to forget to use the translation numbers, but instead to stick in 2003 or 2009, which is an understandable mistake, but it's still wrong. And another error is to forget to look under here to see how you're supposed to answer because you're always going to see that in my math lab. Now, if you've already used my math lab a lot, you already know this, then I apologize. But sometimes people haven't used it or maybe haven't used it in a while. So these are just the warnings. Okay, discussion. Any questions about this? So I have a question about the previous um, problem. OK. All right. Um, yeah, it's gone now. That's OK. I just wanted a clarification that those two lines, what they mean, all they mean is that anything negative turns positive. Exactly. OK, now, cool. Now, the X is negative and it stays negative. I mean, you're okay. because because we're looking for a point, right? So yeah. the X is negative one, but the Y will be negative four. 
OK. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? OK. Now we're going to be dealing with. Graphs and I really don't believe that I'm going to need a calculator. Watch me need a calculator. The the difficult part of this is we're going to deal with two ways of writing the answer. Two different ways of writing the answer. Here comes Bubba. Bubba is going to help me do this. There he is. Say hi. Yeah. He is very loving. I just love having a butt in my face. Not really. OK, we're going to use the graph of the function to find. Answers. So here's a graph. It's a cubic graph. I think we've looked at this graph in different incarnations, if you will. Um, and we're being asked several different questions. So here they are. We're being asked. Now I put the answers in. You won't see the answer. When you're doing it. You'll be looking for the answer. So we're told F of zero. Find F of zero. What is zero? And what this means if we're if you were writing out the question. This is math code, and what this means is, what is y? When x equals zero. OK, so instead of having to take the time to write all that. Mathematicians found a code. And that's what this says, but it's much faster and easier. The number in the parentheses is always going to be the X, the X number, the X coordinate. The number out here is all, <clears throat> excuse me, it's always going to be the Y coordinate. So we're going to find, okay, the trick to doing this, because we don't have the function written out as a formula, we have the graph, so we have to get our answers from the graph. We have to find X equals zero. So X equals zero is right there, right there at the center of the X and the Y axis. That's called the origin. Now, the question is when X is zero, look at the graph and see what what uh, the Y coordinate is going to be. That is when X is zero, how high above or below the X axis is the graph? And the answer is that the graph is not above or below the X axis. It's right on the X axis. Which and the Y, the Y coordinate that that equals is if you count down here, let's start with five, five, four, three, two, one, zero, negative one, like the temperature was at 6 a.m., negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. So why at the center, at the very center, at the origin, uh, X is zero and Y is zero at the same time. So that makes this point zero, zero. So when X is zero, Y is zero. And that's why zero is the answer here. OK, just shout out if you don't understand anything I'm saying. Remember, you always need to try to uh, learn how to read the codes, the secret codes. And I'm, I mean, that really is true. Everything in math is a code. It's a shorthand code for, so you don't have to write a lot of words. 
These are obviously codes, so I want to tell you what they mean. These three, uh, it, this is multiple choice. You can see that the answer is A. Uh, these three codes here are called set builder notation. Okay, and set builder notation writes out the answer like this. An alternate way to write all all real numbers. Well, I'm I'm going to do something first. Remember that the axes are just number lines and all the all the numbers in our number system, which are called the real numbers, the real number system. They can be located on the X axis and on the Y axis. So these numbers keep getting larger in the negative direction until they get to negative infinity, which of course they'll never get to negative infinity because there is not a number named negative infinity. And they keep getting larger in the watt in the right direction, the positive direction. And the symbol we use for that is infinity. And the same here. These keep going down forever. Negative 10, negative 11, negative 12, negative a million, negative a billion. And they keep going to negative infinity on the Y axis. Or they keep going up, that is the Y axis keeps going up. 10, 11, 12, a billion, a trillion, a zillion. I don't think there is a zillion. And we just say infinity so we don't have to write all those numbers because we wouldn't live long enough. No, it would be very frustrating. So this is really what the X and Y axis looks look like. We give a few numbers out to the right and the left and up and down just to know where we are, but really they the, the two axes go on forever in opposite directions. Now, I'm being asked about the domain. And I think we talked about this yesterday. The domain is on the X axis. The domain is given left. To right. Now, since this graph, as it goes down, the up and down is the most visible, but as the graph goes down forever, it also tilts out to the left forever. So eventually, it's going to be at negative infinity on the x-axis. Eventually, it'll be a really long time. And as the graph goes up, since it tilts over to the right, Eventually, after billions of years, it will eventually get out here. So if we were writing in interval notation, and I'm going to write this two ways. Set builder notation. B U I L D E R set builder and interval. That's the other way that we write intervals. Make a little there. Interval notation, uh, since, wait a minute, since this goes to the left forever and to the right forever, all of the numbers on the X axis forever to the left and forever to the right are going to be the domain of the function. They're going to be the source of all the X coordinates of all the little points on the graph that goes on forever. So the points go on forever. Well, in interval notation, the answer 
is negative infinity to positive infinity. That is starting at as far to the left as you can go and then going to the right. In set builder notation, that's read as all the real numbers. You just say all the real numbers. There is a way to write it. If you take calculus, you're going to find a coded way to write all real numbers. But college algebra is an introductory class to higher mathematics, and so we're still giving you words sometime. But let's talk about what these mean. If I were saying this in words, I would say all the numbers on the x-axis such that x, okay, negative infinity is to the left of x, but doesn't equal x, how could it? And x is to the left of zero and it can equal zero. So there are two symbols here. You have strictly to the left or strictly less than. So left and less mean the same thing. And then this means left of or equal to, or equal to. And I'm going to get rid of that and move it up. OK, left of or equal to, or less than or equal to. So the way this is written, we have we have all the numbers on the x axis. And they're in the middle. Of negative infinity. Which is on the left and since X is to the left of zero. That means now zero is to the left of X. No, no, no. X is to the left of zero. Zero is to the right of X, there you go. But X can also equal zero. So what that would be, would be the whole left side of the X axis. If I were going to graph that. Which completely forgets the right side. But how you would write this in interval notation would be you start at negative infinity on the left and you go to zero on the right, but since X can also equal zero, you put a bracket and that means X is allowed to equal zero. Okay, down here, let me erase these check marks. We have the same idea. We have, let me make this bigger so you can see it better. We have all the numbers on the x-axis such that x, the x number on the x-axis, is between negative 10 and positive 10, and X is going to be actually able to equal 10. So we're not talking about the whole X axis. We're talking about the part of the X axis between negative 10, negative 10, all the way to positive 10, and X is actually allowed to equal positive 10, but not negative 10. And, and both of these signs mean less than. Notice how when you write in set builder notation, your signs always go to the left. They never go to the right. 
they always go to the left. Now here we have X between negative 10 and positive 10. So I start at negative 10 and I put a parenthesis around negative 10 because notice there is no line here. If there were a line here, I would put a bracket, but there's not a line there. So I put a parenthesis, which means X is not able to equal negative 10, but it can equal numbers really close to negative 10 on the right and going all the way to positive 10. And X is actually allowed to equal positive 10. So I put a bracket. Two different codes from probably two different parts of Europe. And we have to learn both of them. Now, finally, we've got X We've got zero is to the left of or equal to X, whatever X is, and X is to the left of positive infinity. Ma'am, ma'am. Yes. I have to leave a bit early today. I just wanted to let you know, but I have to go. Okay. Yep, thank you. You're welcome. This will be a video. Awesome, thank you. Uh-huh. So the question of how we would say this, notice that X is allowed to equal zero. And then since positive infinity is on the right, what this says is that X can be any number to the right of zero, including zero. So this, how we would write this would be zero bracket comma infinity parenthesis. An X can never equal a parenthesis. I'm mean, a parenthesis. An infinity sign, because infinity is a symbol, it's not a number. Okay, I know you have questions about this. It's something you have to get used to. Okay, now we've got a question in a different way. Find all the X values such that F of X equals two. Well, let's go back up here. Here we, we were being asked, what is X of zero? In other words, what is the Y coordinate that goes with X equals zero? Here we're being asked the opposite. We're being asked what is X or what are the X's? when the y is 2. This number is always y when you have f of x equals a number. So we're trying to find the x that is matched with 2 on the y-axis. I don't know, let's find it. What you do is find two on the y-axis. There it is right there. Now, to find the, the x-coordinate that is paired with this y-coordinate, I go, I go to wherever the graph is. So I'm gonna come out here. Stop there for a minute. And then find the X coordinate that's paired with this point. And it's going to be two on the X axis. So when in for this particular graph, when Y is two, X is two. So this is the point two for that two, and then two for this two. So here, just to make it clear, we were given the X and we were asked what is the Y. 
down here, we're given the Y, and we're being asked, what is the X? Well, the X is two also. Oh, there it is, right there. You'll always see, uh, use a comma to separate the answers. Well, there's only one answer. But that's not always true. Sometimes you have more than one. All right, let's look at the range. The range is the up and down. What numbers, what Y numbers on the Y axis are included in all the points on the graph. Well, since this graph goes down forever and up forever, the answer is also going to be all the real numbers. But we know it secretly means all real numbers on the Y axis. which again is written negative infinity to positive infinity. Only now it has a different meaning than this negative infinity to positive infinity because the domain is always on the x-axis. So we're talking about a whole different set of point, a set of numbers. Okay, and this negative infinity means lowest. If I could say y equals negative infinity, I would because that's kind of the meaning. Negative infinity on the y axis and then highest positive infinity on the y axis. So range goes from lowest to highest, domain goes from left to right. I should write that too. Do oh, I did. Am I smart or what? So negative it to positive, essentially. Negative to positive, both ways, yeah. Negative to positive. Good. However, you want to be careful about that because you might not have any negative numbers involved. If you have a little thing that goes from two to four. Well, then you'd say that, yeah, you start at two and you go to four. You always start at the lowest to go to the highest when you're talking about the range. So lowest to highest? Yes, lowest to highest is probably the best way to think about it. Range is lowest to highest. Less to more, I guess. I don't know. Or less to more. I like that. Less to more. Least to most. There, that's good too. And that would mean the same thing up here left to right would be on the x-axis least to most, smallest to biggest, because the more negative you are, the smaller you are, technically. So this would also be least to greatest, least to most. Okay, good comments. Any any more? Open circles. 
we're also being asked for domain and range. Use the graph to find the following. F of negative four. Now this is the X, we're being given the X. <clears throat> and this is the answer we're looking for, which is the Y. So it means when X equals negative four, what is Y? So, I go to X equals negative four, and I go to the graph, and once I'm at the graph, I make a turn and I go to the Y axis. This is negative three. So when X is negative four, Y is negative three, which makes this point negative four, negative three. Pretty cool. Now let's compare that to to this. What are the x values such that f of x, which is y, equals negative three? Well, you go to y, you go to y equals negative three. Sorry about the phone, I forgot to turn it off. Go to y equals negative three. Go to the graph. And then find the x axis that's paired, the x number that's paired with it. The x value on the x axis. And so we're, I mean, isn't that cute? We're given negative four and ask what is the y coordinate. Then we're given the y coordinate and ask what is x, but you really already know the answer to that. X equals negative four. And here, let me draw a line up. So you can go from y to x or x to y. Most of the time though, we go from x to y. Now the, the meaning of the open circles if that were filled in, I'm going to temporarily fill it in. If this were filled in, this would be the point negative eight, negative six. And if this were filled in, it would be the point zero, zero. But they're not filled in little problem there. What that means is all of these points exist. They're on the line. But the actual point negative eight, negative six does not exist. D and E. And the point zero, zero for this particular graph does not exist. D and E. However, all the points on the line can get infinitely close to negative eight, negative six, just not on negative eight, negative six itself. So really, that open circle is submicroscopic. You might not be able to see it. They make a big circle, okay? It's not really big. And the same here, all the points on this line can get infinitely close to the point zero, zero, but just not zero, zero. So what this means is that X 
does not equal negative 8. Y does not equal negative 6. And up here, X does not equal 0. And Y does not equal 0. However, all of these points do exist. So let's see what else we're being asked here. Choose the correct domain. Well, for sure, for sure. The farthest left X coordinate, which we can't use, but the farthest left X coordinate is negative eight. And the farthest right X coordinate is x equals zero, but x cannot equal zero. Minor point. What we're gonna do is this. We're gonna be looking for domain, and that's gonna, yes, it's gonna go from negative eight to zero, but notice, so this is the only choice that has the right numbers. And if you look at these, inequality signs that's a less than that's a less than less than and left of mean the same thing and it is true that whatever x might equal on the x-axis that's what that says all the numbers on the x-axis such that the x's we're talking about are between negative eight and zero but the fact that there is no line under here means that X cannot equal negative eight and X cannot equal zero. So that's why this is the answer. And in, all right, this is set builder. And if I write these answers in interval, just so you can see the equivalent answers. This would be negative 10 to 10. This would be negative eight to zero. And this would be negative six to zero. And all real numbers would be negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, that doesn't look like a so form. So if the question, if the question was choose the correct range, would it be? Um... Uh, let me pull the graph back over. Okay. If it was choose the correct range, wouldn't it be C? Let's see. Ah, yeah, and, and you are asked that. Choose the correct range, and you're, yeah, you're yeah, correct. Notice they use Ys because mm -hmm. it's on the Y axis. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Very good. Okay, and that would be negative six comma zero with parentheses, negative eight comma zero, negative 10, positive 10. Just translating, if I were going to translate these into interval notation. Why is it um, written the way it is, like before you translate or simplify it? What does that mean, the way it's written? Um, it's just two different ways of writing exactly the same thing. Because Are you ever going to be like required to know how to write it in that way and write it in that way? Or can we always just simplify it to the way we like to write it? Uh, most people use only interval notation. In this particular book, um, the authors really love set builder notation and they put that in first 
to help you get familiar with it, because when you're looking for the answer in the back of the book, publishers love set builder notation. Okay. So I don't know what they we have again. I'm we're sorry. We're not going to be punished for using interval at all, ever. Or at least in this class. Okay, I'll go for that. Well, Although you still have to choose like A, B, and C and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But when it comes to writing it, no, you're not going to have to write it. Uh, okay. Interval, yes. Set builder, no. Okay. OK, I want to get rid of that four because people. Are going to be looking at this and I don't want everybody to say, oh, it looks like a T. Why'd she put a T? I didn't, I didn't really. There and here. There's the answer. Now I want to make sure that we go through the different kinds of problems. I'm going to come back to this one because this is an absolute value. And I want you to see that for one of the questions, well, we're going to do it right now. One of the questions, there are two answers. So let's do that. F of three, well, you can see what the answer is. You normally wouldn't know. What is Y? when x equals three, and you would come over here and it says, notice they're specifying positive three. So for positive three, you start at positive three, you go up to the graph, and then over to the y-axis. Aha, and it lands on three. So three on the y-axis and three on the x-axis are being paired, which means this point is three, three. But, we're not gonna bother with, oh, okay. I guess we better bother with domain and range. Uh, yeah, I'll just do it. This graph goes forever to the left and forever to the right, so the domain is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. Every number on the x-axis will eventually encounter points on this, this graph. So the domain is all real numbers. Now, but look at this. This is written a little bit differently. This is written the same, but these guys, look at how they're written. That's because they're trying to get you all confused with the range. You're gonna see that the range is written differently. Um, okay, but meanwhile, Meanwhile, I wanted you to see this. What are the, what is or are the X values that are paired with Y equals two? This is Y, this is X, and you're being asked what is X? So we're going to start at two on the y axis. Here's two on the y axis. I'm going to go out to the graph. Oh, but then there's more of the graph over here. So if I go out to the graph here and come down to the x-axis, I see 
that two on the y-axis is paired with four on the x-axis. But over here is also part of the graph. So two on the y-axis is also paired with eight on the x-axis. So we have, we have these two points. We have the point 4, 2, and we have the point 8, 2. Both 4 and 8 are paired with the y-coordinate 2. And that's why these are the answers. And that's when you use a comma. You have two different answers. And there's the comma. And it's a matter of how the question is asked. Because if you had been asked the same thing for three, that is, what is f of x? What, what does x equal when y is three? then you would have gone all the way out to both sides and come down. So here, what three on the y-axis is paired with three on the x-axis, but over here, three on the y-axis is paired with nine on the x-axis. It's all a matter of how the question is asked. If you start with X, you only go to the particular X they ask about. If you go to the Y, then you have to go to all parts of the graph. When you've got more than one part of the graph intersecting a horizontal line, well, that does mean something. It's still a function because that's vertical line, but at the end, at the end of the semester, we're going to talk about, well, what does it mean if a horizontal line goes through more than one part of the graph? And there is a meaning there, but you don't have to worry about it now. Now, these weird answers. I have no idea why I underlined that. Did I? Yes, I guess. Well, unless there's a ghost. Now we're being asked about the range. And this is the lowest y coordinate, and that's y equals zero. Y equals zero is the lowest y coordinate. And then both arms of this go up forever. So the graph is going to go start at y equals zero, and go up forever. So here they've chosen, well, down here. Here they've said, okay, we're going to take all the y's on the y axis such that. such that y does equal zero, there's not a hold there, y does equal zero, and it equals every number greater than zero on the y-axis. So our answer is y is greater than or equal to zero. This is y equals zero. y is equal to or greater than zero if you were writing it out in words.
Now, quite honestly, it could also have been written zero is less than or equal to y is less than infinity. So there's a choice. Both are equally correct. How do you type out an infinity sign? Um, what you have to do is, well, this is just a copy, but once you click on one of the answer boxes, you get a toolbar down here that has all the signs you're going to need. So you'll see an infinity sign and you'll just click on it. I mean, if that were okay. the answer. Yeah, interval notation way out here. Interval notation for this. Would be bracket zero comma infinity. I love interval notation. Can you try to explain why it'll be like a half bracket, half parenthesis, like what does a bracket and parenthesis mean in a? Okay. Um, this would mean y equals y is allowed to equal zero. Y actually equals zero. But here, you can't say that y equals infinity because infinity is just a symbol. It's not a number. If it were a number, you could say y equals that number, but then that would say the universe has a stopping place. Okay, so bracket means y equals the number next to it, and parentheses means y doesn't equal the number next to it. Yes, but okay. gets really close. Okay. OK, let's do one of these. How many do I have? Ah. Uh, and then paper I should have gotten rid of. Yeah, but we have gone over just real fast. All right, we're being asked to find F of negative four, F of negative three, F of negative two. F of negative four means go to X equals negative four, go all the way down until it intersects the graph, and then go to the Y axis, and that would be negative nine. Um, X equals negative three, go all the way to the graph, and then over to the Y axis, and that's negative six y equals negative two, go all the way down to the graph, and then once you hit the graph, go over to the y-axis, and that would be negative seven, which is why f of negative four equals negative nine, F of negative three equals negative six. F of negative two equals negative seven. So there's that pairing that occurs on the graph itself between an X coordinate on the X axis and a Y coordinate on the Y axis. And that's what functions do. It's what relations do. OK, and just real fast, I bet you can read charts that are in the paper. This is uh, uh, this is a typical chart you could see in the newspaper in the financial. Um, the financial part of the newspaper or the or if you uh, CNBC, you know, if you tune into a financial program. Um, 
see, let's say here the graph shows a pro, uh, here the graph below approximates the number of children in a country who lived only with their grandparents in the years 1991 through 2009. And so here are those years, 1991 to 2009. Um, approximate the number of children living only with grandparents in 1991. And that means find F of 1991. Okay, now each of these numbers doesn't mean there was, 0.2 is one fifth. Um, one child and then one fifth of a child that lived with a grandparent. That would be horrible. No, this is in millions, okay? So 1.2 really means 1.2 million. So in 1991, you go up to the graph and then over to the y-axis and you see that the answer is 1.2 million. So let's see if I, if they wrote down the answer. No, but, but that's what you would choose. 1.2 in this graph means 1.2 in millions. So lots of kids live just with their grandparents. Now that's not this country, they're making up a country. I'm sure there are probably more kids in this country who live with their grandparents. Um, yeah, all they ask about was 1991, but you could go to 1996, go up to the graph, go over, that would be 1.4 million children. Um, 2001, go up to the graph and over, that would be 1.5 million children. So that's how you read graphs. This is the same kind of a very normal kind of graph. This deals with pharmacists. How many pharmacists are there in different years, in the thousands? And that's our homework for today.